Hey friends, so a new study finds that consumption of ultra processed foods actually accelerates cognitive decline and decreases executive function by some 28%. This was a study that involved thousands of subjects over the course of a 10 year period And I think it's important to address. I I know that many of you realize and recognize that most Americans eat too much ultra processed foods. Analysis show that about 58% of the calories that most people eat comes from ultra processed foods. Now we've known for a long time that consumption of these foods increases risk for cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity. But this is one of the first studies of its kind to show that consumption of ultra processed foods actually increase cognitive decline and accelerate the aging and the deterioration of the brain, which is really important. We've talked about all-cause mortality uh, incidents and the prevalence of, say, cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's dementia. Dementia and Alzheimer's comprise, collectively, the fourth leading cause of death over the past several years. And so this is a big reason why people's quality of life and function of life and the the uh, ability to live independently throughout lifespan declines because their brains actually lose the ability to remember and executive function goes down. So if you want to preserve the health of your brain, please keep watching. We're going to share with you ways to do that. So the title of this study, which was, by the way, published in the Journal of the American Association Subjournal Neurology, JAMA Neurology. I want to thank my friend who's actually a neurosurgeon who sent this to me. The association between consumption of ultra processed foods and cognitive decline is the title of the paper. I'll read you the conclusion. We'll talk about the details. A higher percentage of daily energy consumption from ultra processed foods was associated with cognitive decline among adults from an ethnically diverse sample. These findings support current public health recommendations on limiting ultra processed food consumption because of their potential harm to cognitive function. The study involved over 15,000 subjects. And this is really important because, again, the Archives of Internal Medicine recently reported, I believe it was in the fall of 2021, that most children, 65% of the energy they consume, the calories, comes from ultra-processed foods. In adults, it's about 10% less, but about 57% of the calories that most Americans eat and North Americans, Canadians, come from ultra-processed junk food. Now, this is, this is really problematic because as this study found in this cohort of 10,000 subjects, that higher consumption of ultra processed foods was associated with a higher rate of global and executive function decline at, in an eight year follow up period. Now, these stats are, are quite interesting when we think about this because you might notice in your own family that, you know, Aunt Sally or, or Grandma Sue is starting to notice that she her memory is not as good anymore. And so she's going to the doctor, she's being put on these medications, but really, the way to potentially reverse this and slow the trajectory of cognitive decline is actually right in the diet. It's consuming less processed foods. Now, what are these foods you might be wondering? Anything that's ultra processed, anything with a shelf life. So flour, packaged foods, treats, cookies, crackers, chips, all of those things that are ultra processed, that are manufactured by food scientists, by the mega food corporations, Kellogg's and and all the rest. Now, this also includes, I know it might offend some people, but some low carb junk food. We know that there's all these cookies out there and those those treats. Those should be like 5% of your calorie intake, my friends. This should not be a major source of your energy intake. We're, we wanna focus on eating whole real foods. Now, the reason why whole real foods are overall better for you is because they don't have the over-exaggeration in the post glucose and commensurate insulin response when you consume them. So when you eat whole brew foods, they take a long, they're more satiating, number one. You actually have to chew them with your teeth. Think about whether we're talking about eating an apple, eating eggs, eating you know, meats, avocados. You need to chew these things. You actually need to go through. And the act of chewing improves digestion, improves the post-meal metabolic response, post-meal glucose response, all the different gut hormones. There's like, I think, 20-some-odd gut hormones, GLP-1, GIP-1. Uh, there's all these different hormones that actually help process your foods and redistribute them into the muscles in the body and decrease fat storage. So very important. But I want you to focus on, on figure two here. And this is where you start to notice the age-associated change in cognitive decline as it's linked with quartiles of processed food consumption. So as you can see here, the people who eat most mostly ultra-processed foods, which by the way, unfortunately, if you go to memory centers, if you go to assisted care facilities, what are the people that are in there eating? It's ultra-processed foods. My grandmother was in one of these homes, unfortunately, because she had dementia. And I was blown away, actually disgusted at the foods that, you know, at the time my father was paying for her being there, a lot of money to pay for food that is literally hastening or worsening her pre-existing cognitive decline. And so this is really important. And the long and short of it 
is this study shows that over the course of a eight year period, there was a 28% decline in cognitive function and executive function in people who consume majority of their calories from ultra processed foods compared to people who don't. So if you want to preserve the health of your brain, my friends, it starts literally at the kitchen table. It starts at the grocery store. Please don't bank on some new investigational drug that costs thousands of dollars per month by the time it will be available by the time your brain starts to deteriorate. You need to start now. We just did a great podcast with a reporter, investigative journalist, Max Lugavere. We talked about all the different ways, nutritional strategies, exercises, uh, novel stimuli, learning an instrument. This is why I'm teaching myself Spanish now. I find that that helps really with brain function. This is why gardening, this might be why uh, doing arts and crafts in the sort are great for brain health and brain function. But the mechanisms here with regards to how consuming processed foods might hasten or worsen cognitive decline have to do with the dearth of micronutrients. So we know that ultra processed foods are rich in arachidonic acid and omega-6 fats, which have been shown to alter cell membrane health, increase inflammation, and decrease metabolic flexibility. There's been numerous studies to show, although there's different subtypes of Alzheimer's and dementia, but numerous studies consistently show that metabolic dysfunction insulin resistance leads to a dearth of energy within the neuronal cells and the cells that support the neurons, the, the microglia. This is the sort of the structure that helps support the neurons and clean up uh, debris and, and protein fibrils and so forth within the neurons themselves. These can become compromised when there's a dearth of energy in the case of insulin resistance. And because research shows, and this was in the Haynes data, showed that about 94.5% of U.S. adults have some degree of poor cardiometabolic health and insulin resistance. So this impacts a lot of people. Now you might say, well, I have a friend who's super smart who eats a lot of junk food. Yeah, they might be super smart now, but remember it takes years, decades. We have football players that, that have all this repeated head trauma and have CTE. That starts in their 20s, but they don't manifest symptoms oftentimes until their late 40s, 50s or beyond. So it's important, the, the health of your brain later in life depends on how you live right now. So I encourage you, my friends, to take this data seriously and start to consume more whole real foods. Learn to cook, Google recipes, figure this out, invest in a crock pot. I, our slow cooker crock pot is going literally every day in our house. Whether we're making stews or soups or lamb or all these things, it's very easy to do. No one in my family has been a chef, I'm not a chef, but you just learn by practice. And so I know a lot of people say, I don't have time to cook, I, I don't know how to cook. You can make the time if you want to preserve the health of your brain and have a better quality of life as you age. So I implore you to start cooking whole real foods, stop buying the convenience foods, the bars, the protein bars, the cookies, all of these things are so fast and easy because they are devoid of nutrients, they are enriched in, in counterproductive nutrients, linoleic acid, arachidonic acid, and other things, high glycemic carbohydrates that hasten cognitive decline that is also linked, by the way, with cancer and heart disease and all the rest. So I want to thank my friend for sending me this paper. The data is quite clear. We now know that consumption of processed foods not only make you overweight, not only increase your risk of heart disease and diabetes, but accelerate the decline of your brain, leading to a 28% decrease in cognitive function. And they actually did some imaging studies and found that there was lower white matter volume. That is, the brain is actually shrunk in people who consume ultra processed foods compared to people who do not. So this is real, friends. You need to eat real food, eat whole foods, learn to make your food from scratch. It's worthwhile. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing this video. Leave a comment below and I'll put links to the study so that you can share this research with people that you care about in your life. We'll catch you later.